Hello class, welcome to lecture 8. And in this first segment of lecture 8, we're going to be deriving something called the mass continuity equation. And in some seg subsequent segments, we'll take a look at some of the physical consequences of it. But uh, just a fair warning, get ready to do a lot of calculus and a lot of math. So put on your math hats, and then we can go ahead and get started. But first off, the whole idea behind the mass continuity equation stems from the law of conservation of mass, which you may remember from your physics classes means that mass cannot be created or destroyed. There's a fixed amount of mass present in the universe and usually to a good approximation a fixed amount of mass in the Earth's atmosphere. So that's the underlying physical principle that goes into the derivation of the mass continuity equation or stated in more mathematical terms. This just simply means that the change in mass through any length of time is equal to zero. So that's our starting point, dm dt is equal to zero. And I'm also going to go ahead and rewrite this so that this is actually a derivative operation. So here I'm saying take the time derivative of mass. And right now this is not something that's really, uh, really impressive, not something that we can really work with. But we can make a couple substitutions to actually turn this into something that we can actually apply in the atmosphere. Again, we don't like measuring mass in the atmosphere. So if we can get this in terms of something else, that would be nice. And one thing we can use to get this in terms of something else is the fundamental definition of density, where density is equal to mass divided by volume. If we solve for mass and we get this, mass is equal to density times volume, and then we can just take this expression for mass and plug it in to this equation up here so we get time derivative of rho times volume, density times volume is equal to zero. And in this case, we're going to be considering an infinitesimally small volume element. So that means that volume is equal to some infinitesimal difference in the x direction times some infinitesimal difference in the y direction times some infinitesimal distance in the z direction. So you can sort of think of this as a really, 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 really tiny cube in some portion of the atmosphere. So if we make that substitution, we get this ddt of rho times v is equal to zero. And uh, hopefully you remember this from your calculus classes. Here we can invoke something called the product rule. So we get we can uh, basically state that this entire thing on the left hand side is equal to the first quantity times the derivative of the second quantity plus the second quantity times the der derivative of the first quantity. And if we invoke that product rule, we get a result that looks like this: rho dv dt plus v d rho dt is equal to zero. Now I'm going to go ahead and uh, do a couple things here. First of which is I'm going to divide this entire equation by volume which will actually make this a little bit simpler as we'll see a little bit later on. And also I'm going to go ahead and rearrange the order of the terms here so that my derivative of density with respect to time, like this is a total derivative, so it's a Lagrangian term, and that will become a little bit significant later on. But I get this time derivative of density plus rho over v times dv dt. And again, keep in mind what we're considering here. We're considering a volume element given by uh, infinitesimal distance in the x direction times infinitesimal difference distance in the y direction times an infinitesimal distance in the z direction. And what we can do is we can plug in that result for v, or plug in that expression for v, so I get rho over v, or rho over dx times dy times dz, which is given down here, and then all that times the time derivative of the volume element, which is going to be d of dt times dx times dy times dz. So that gives us this equation. Now, Again, we have to go back to calculus one and again evoke a product rule. Now, most of you are probably familiar with the product rule when it involves just two terms. Here we've got a product rule that involves three terms. But if you go through the exercise and uh, look at things in a certain way, you can actually show that the derivative or the product rule when you have three terms is just the first term times the second term plus the derivative of the third term plus the, fir thir the first term times the third term times the derivative of the second term plus the second term times the third term times the derivative of the first term. So that just basically means that we get an expression that looks like this. So that's just taking the idea of the product rule a little bit further. And if we apply that same thing to our equation up here, we get this giant mess. d rho dt plus rho times 1 over our volume element. All of that multiplied by dx dy times time derivative of dz plus dx dz times time derivative of dy plus dy times d, d, dz times time derivative of dx, and all of that is equal to zero. Now here comes another calculus trick, and that involves this time derivative of, differ, of a differential, and you might be wondering, how are we supposed to do anything with that? Well, there's a little bit of a, another calculus property that we can employ. Uh, some mathematicians might not like what I'm about to do, but it in fact does work out, even though it might be oversimplified by mathematician terms. So let's take a look at this ddt of dx. 
So we have a derivative of a differential. Something that we can do is we can actually reverse the order of the operation. So instead of taking a derivative of a differential, we can take a differential of a derivative, which might seem kind of weird, but that basically amounts to what you have here. So instead of taking derivative first, then the differential, we take, or excuse me, before taking, instead of taking deri differential first, and then the derivative, we take the derivative first, then the differential. So we get d of dx dt. But dx dt is just your velocity in the zonal direction, which is just lowercase u. So we just get du from that. And then we can apply the same logic to our Morial component and get that d dt of dy is just equal to dv. And then same thing for the vertical component, d dt of dz is just equal to dw. And we can go ahead and apply that same thing to, or apply that idea to an equation up here and get this result. d rho dt plus rho times 1 over dx times dy times dz, our volume element times this whole mess. And what I'm about to do is going to make everything look really complicated, but it's actually going to simplify down very elegantly. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take this volume element and distribute it to each term inside of the parentheses here, each of these differentials, to get something that looks like this. And you'll notice that a lot of these differentials end up canceling out. So the dx's cancel out, the dy's cancel out in this first term, the dx's and dz's cancel out in the second term, and the dy's and the dz's cancel out in the third term. So all that junk cancels out, and we get a result that looks like this. And the only thing, uh, the only other thing I'm doing is I'm rewriting this as a partial derivative instead of a total derivative, because this really should be considered a partial derivative. So that's the result that we get. And then something that you may recall from multivariable calculus, well, first I'm going to reorder this, so I get du dx plus dv du y plus dw dz. But something you may remember from multivariable calculus is that this quantity inside the parentheses here, that's just the divergence of the wind field. In other words, our del operator, which we looked at in lecture one, dotted with the wind vector. And if you evaluate that dot product and take the derivatives as necessary, you should get a result that looks like this, du dx plus dv dy plus dw dz. So we can replace this entire thing in the parentheses if we want to simplify it a little bit. We can replace that entire expression with del dot v to make this a little bit simpler to work with. But it doesn't stop there. Remember that this is a Lagrangian derivative. This is a Lagrangian term. And one of the definitions that we like to work with in meteorology is that the Lagrangian is equal to the Eulerian plus all of the external forcings. In this case, we're only going to consider advection. So the Lagrangian, the total derivative is equal to the local derivative or the Eulerian plus the advection of density in this case. And if we take this expression for d rho dt and plug it into the expression that we have up here, into this term, we get a result that looks like this. So we get d rho dt, partial derivative, plus v dot grad rho plus rho times grad dot v is equal to zero, or del dot v is equal to zero. I use grad and del interchangeably because they're just same, just the same name for the same names for the same thing. And then there's another vector identity which, if you want to verify for yourself, you're certainly welcome to. But this is basically uh, a vector identity that again uses the product rule that we've used so many times before. This kind of looks like a product rule of sorts, but you can use the fact that this entire thing, this uh, v dot grad rho plus rho times grad dot v, that in fact can be simplified down to this, where you get del dot parentheses rho dot v is equal to that entire thing. So we can just simply replace these two terms with this expression to get something like this. And, believe it or not, that is in fact our end result. That is the mass continuity equation after jumping through all of the mathematical hoops and hurdles. Now, how about some physical meaning behind this? So we did all this math. What, do we actually, what exactly does this all mean now? Well, as kind of already mentioned, this d rho dt term, this partial derivative, that is in fact the local Eulerian change in density. So at a fixed point, this basically models how the density changes uh, at a fixed point in space. Now things get a little bit interesting when we take a look at this term, this grad dot rho times v, all done, uh, the rho v in parentheses, that is in fact the divergence of mass flux. And we'll talk a little bit more about what exactly that means in the next segment, but for now I just want to go ahead and give this term a name and just, just to mention that it does have some sort of physical significance. And also the zero on the right hand side is important because that tells us that this entire thing is a conserved quantity, meaning if we change our density 
uh, with time, that means that, that change has got to be caused by this divergence of mass flux term. And we'll talk more about that in some of the upcoming segments. And hopefully it'll make more sense as to what actually is going on here. But uh, that's it for the derivation of the mass continuity equation. And so with that, I will see you all in the next segment.